For leaders of the Hindu faith, the temple grounds are sacred. No alcohol or meat allowed on the premises. But some priests say they routinely had to clean up beer and meat after parties at the Hindu temple of Georgia. And as IT reporter Randy Travis discovered in his special report, that is just the beginning. Randy? That's right, Russ. A man of the Swami who runs this Norcross temple sure talks a big game. But as you're about to see, critics claim this place has one true mission, pocket as much money as possible. Before you enter the Hindu temple of Georgia, you must leave your shoes outside. But on the inside, wallets are always welcome. How are you going to do this? Well, I don't have any money on me now. That's fine. You can pay the credit card. The I-team took a hidden camera inside this Norcross temple to ask about renting the huge auditorium for a family reunion. The ad in the official temple magazine said rentals started at $499. It wound up being just a little bit more. It will be around four to five thousand dollars. Four to five thousand for the evening. Yeah. Critics claim the temple operates as a money-making business for its swami or religious leader. His name is Anamale Anamale, but he goes by Dr. Commander Selvam. He drives expensive cars, lives in a heavily mortgaged million-dollar mansion, and charges thousands of dollars to help people overcome life's biggest problems by selling prayers or pujas over the telephone. <laughs> But even some of his priests are now giving Dr. Commander a new title, King of Greed. If a person comes to the temple, his first motive is how to get money from that guy. These two priests once worked at the Hindu temple of Georgia. They came from India last year, excited with the chance to work with a holy man. The excitement quickly evaporated. The cell is a self-proclaimed. So they filed a complaint with Gwinnett police, hoping to put a stop to what they say they witnessed. The Swami swiping credit cards multiple times, overcharging people who called to ask for his blessings. But the worst insult for these priests, they say they had to clean up meat and alcohol left over from non-Hindu parties inside the temple auditorium. We are ashamed of uh, doing uh, that kind of duties. Meat and alcohol are serious issues among most Hindus, especially in a temple. Temple should be free of all these things. Even the building the temple is in? Even the building the temple is in, even the building, the premises of the temple, no smoking, no alcohol, no meat, no questions. So when the I-team showed up to ask about renting the auditorium, we made it clear our one-night family reunion would involve lots of alcohol and piles of barbecue. Could we cook it outside and bring yeah, it can, in? Or? You can cook it outside and you can bring okay. it in. But we didn't just ask the temple's chief priest, Sharma, we asked the Swami himself. Could we bring alcohol, beer, and wine? Except drugs, you can bring anything in. He is not qualified at all. Dr. Commander would not return our phone calls, but instead, the next day, signs reading Hindus only allowed suddenly appeared at the entrance to his Norcross temple. Dr. Commander filed his own police report, accusing the two priests of stealing money. They deny that and claim the Swami kept them here against their will until they could finally flee back home to India. We interviewed them on their final night in Atlanta. Yeah, all the priests are uh, afraid of him. That's the two priests also claim Dr. Commander misled them about how many other temples he had across the country. Listen to what he told us about the location of his temples. Here in California, one in Houston, Texas. Oh, yeah? One in Virginia. Oh. I got 19 countries, actually. The I-team found no records of an actual temple connected to Dr. Commander in any of those states. But look at this. In his October 2007 magazine, Dr. Commander announced the grand opening of the Hindu Temple of West Georgia in Carrollton, including a line under this impressive picture thanking the Swami for dedicating this temple for us. But if you actually drive out here to Carrollton, this is what the temple really looks like. A couple of vacant buildings on a piece of land that no one seems to have cared about for quite some time. The property is up for sale. In fact, Dr. Commander ran an ad in his magazine listing the Carrollton land for sale at the same time he was announcing the supposed grand opening of the temple here. He borrowed heavily to buy this land, just as he did his mansion in the Sugarloaf Country Club. Back inside the Norcross Temple, the chanting continues. Pujas, prayers for a price. Can you give some donation? Oh, I, I don't have to. I think it's in the car. My, my wallet's in the car. And that was a good decision. Now I want to show you what one follower says she got from Dr. Commander. She had severe stomach pain, so she says he sent her this. Sand taken from a cobra's pit 
while he says the cobra was still in there. Now, she was supposed to rub the sand on her stomach twice a week with a wet cloth, then rub some of this stuff. I'm not quite sure what this is. It's the sort of jelly material here. And for this and some prayers, she says she paid or was charged $13,000. Mm. She is fighting now. She's complained to the Better Business Bureau, hoping they can help get back uh, her money. He says this was a holy secret recipe. But did she feel better? No, she's actually sicker, to be honest with oh, you, Amanda. By the way, uh, Dr. Commander faxed over another statement to us late this afternoon denying any credit card problems there at his temple. We'll have his full letter posted on my blog on myfoxatlanta.com tonight. A lot of reaction there already. Absolutely.